<laughs> Halloween is the coolest time of the year. It gives everyone a chance to mask their everyday identities to become a new character. A masquerade that blankets everything for one night. From fairies to werewolves, anything you can imagine comes alive. So on this momentous night, you choose to be lazy, wearing the oldest bed sheet you can find in the hamper. What? It smells like old pizza and toenails. Well, those are my two favorite things. Let's just get going. I don't want to be late for the party. Not to mention, it's not even scientifically accurate. What's that supposed to mean? Ghosts aren't something you can just explain away with science. Of course, the only case for definitive scientific proof would be a physical manifestation. I know that, but think about it. What if ghosts were real? What would they be made out of? If they were real? Come on, Mary. I'm serious. If we think of signs that categorize a haunting, I bet we can link it to events with certain scientific anomalies. Please, just use English. <sighs> Starting off, a ghost, for the most part, is translucent, a being with no defined form, having the ability to move throughout an environment, never being affected by any physical obstruction it encounters. Like if there's a tree in its way, it can just go through the tree, right? Precisely. But this ability isn't found in any living being that possesses a physical body. So we need to think beyond life forms. Something that surrounds us almost constantly. Gas. I wouldn't say constantly. Maybe on Taco Tuesdays. Not that type of gas, John. The gas I'm thinking of involves water vapor and is called fog. Fog. Interesting. Yes, fog. Through a process of the liquid molecules close to the ground, rapidly cooling and condensing, a mass of visible condensation is formed. This fog, like air, is shapeless and can move about in an unobstructed type of way. Also, the translucidity of a ghost can be explained by the thickness of a fog. For example, mist, which is a less condensed type of fog, is almost see-through, while a thick fog can block your sight to just a couple of inches in front of you. Wow, that does match a ghost. But what about the other things a ghost can do, like changing the air temperature, moving objects, and stealing people's breath? Well, believe it or not, fog can do all these things and more. Let's start with changing air temperature. There, a phenomenon which is known for its chilling properties called freezing fog. Freezing fog happens when the water droplets that composes the fog are super cooled. Super cooled water droplets remain in the liquid state until they come into contact with a surface upon which they can freeze. As a result, anything that freezing fog comes into contact with will become wintry, even leaving an icy coat on whatever crosses its path. Super cooled freezing fog sounds more supernatural to me. No, it's a naturally occurring event that causes a drastic visual and physical change. Enough not only to turn your breath milky white, but also send the chill straight down your back. Now that I've explained freezing fog, it's pretty easy to link the other two paranormal signs you mentioned. Take, for instance, shortness of breath, when in the radius of a phantom. This can be linked directly to the intense coldness present when surrounded by freezing fog. It's quite common for cold air to cause minor to serious spasms in a person's lung waves, making it harder to breathe. I never knew cold air could be so dangerous. Listen, for the most part, the average person should be fine, but it wouldn't be uncommon for someone to encounter shortness of breath if it was cold enough, especially if that person was frantically nervous due to a ghostly encounter. We finally made it! I heard there are gonna be awesome Halloween themed exhibits. Yeah, I bet there will be. But actually, you still ha haven't explained the poltergeist. How can freezing fog pick up and throw objects? Listen, John, ever heard of a thing called wind? Well, yeah, but hasn't everyone felt a little bit of wind? Precisely. Remember, all gases, including freezing fog, travels within the air. Now, when air pressure constantly changes, wind occurs. The physical force of wind meeting its strength depends on its flow velocity, 
also known as its speed. So with record wind speeds at 231 miles per hour, wind has enough force to knock over a house, a minivan, and yes, John, a chair. Well, I gotta give it to you, Mary. You really put up a good argument on ghosts being freezing fog, but I still have to disagree. To each his own. Come on, John, let's go. I'm starting to get a chill out here. John? John, come on. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs>